two guards on the center line, a little offline, do belong to Yannick Schwaller. Yeah, you're watching two top 20 teams in the world play here. Number five and number 16, respectively. Brenner, the lower half of that. And uh, alongside that, um, the number one and two ranked teams in the country of Switzerland. So you could say a bit of a rivalry game here, and it's for uh, it's a big one with a lot on the table. So exciting to see. I've called games here, Josh, in Saskatchewan for a number of years now, and I had a game a few years ago. Well, I guess it's quite a few years ago now. I had uh, Randy Bryden playing against Jamie Schneider, both in about the same age group, both longtime Regina teams, and they're playing in a Bonspiel final. And I'm talking to both teams before the game and just trying to be a little bit of a smart aleck. I asked if uh, they'd ever played against each other before, and I happened to catch both teams on opposite sides of the rink. So I, I posed the question to both teams, and uh, I got a just a, a pat answer from the Schneider team. But Randy Bryden, when I asked him, have you played these guys before? He didn't miss a beat right away. His answer was not today. And <laughs> that's kind of the situation we're looking at here. These two teams have probably played against each other before. Well, especially not, with the, uh, there's not a, an abundance of uh, high profile teams playing at uh, maybe the grand slam level as these two are in Switzerland. And if I'm not mistaken, the the Swiss playdowns are played on uh, like best of five, best of seven sort of uh, format. Don't quote me specifically on that. So these teams probably have a lot of experience playing each other, yeah, I'm not sure playing each that. other in the same week. There were three Swiss teams here this week on the men's side, and I think two on the women's side, if I remember correctly. I think you're right about that, yes. interesting to know and i don't know whether any of the viewers at home might know when you get a contingent of five teams like that from switzerland or maybe there's a six somewhere along the line when they're over here in north america you just wonder do they travel together and, and maybe train and go to some of these same events certainly on the men's side the three teams all here at the same event expect uh, two of them will be in saskatoon for the grand slam maybe all three of them Well, especially to your point of uh, being familiar with each other, Michael Brunner and uh, Yannick Schwaller are former teammates, of course, for a number of years. So this is a bit of a, uh, definitely a bigger game for the two of them, but definitely a test of how well they know each other for sure as well. Playing opposite positions as they did when they did play together, though, it used to be Yannick Schwaller throwing the fourth stones and calling the game. And Michael Brunner throwing thirds and playing vice. Anthony Pitaud looking to come down, tap that stone back, rolls the shooter across. It is still the yellow stone back eight foot, belonging to Yannick Schwaller that is shot rock. Brunner has second, third, and fourth, and last rock. As you mentioned, Yannick Schwaller is the third on this team that calls the game, so making his way down to the hacks to throw, looking to bring another stone into the top four foot behind cover. Yeah, and I think we've seen uh, Yannick Schwaller really settle into that third role the last couple of years since he's moved down. Obviously still in the uh, in the house calling the game, but him and Benoit Schwartz seem to have built a lot of uh, chemistry back there especially with Sven Michel moving down to uh, throwing second stones now on this rink, opposed to when he was playing with Peter de Cruz. I think he's really come out of his shell as well. This is a really strongly built team. Nice line coming by the guards. The question now will be, can they get it all the way to the forefoot? Well, he's going to tuck a piece into the, uh, he's got half the forefoot dead behind cover. One just throwing his shot rock. He's got second shot at the back of the eight. Michael Brunner's first inclination is to play the uh, angle red onto the yellow. He can only see about half of that rock, but we know there's late finish here. He can probably get to, well, three quarters, maybe two thirds. That's what he needs to hit.
for Michael Brenner, Anthony Pitoud. Uh, Pitoud is the third, the lead. Andreas Gerlach with the rush down. Second, Romana Meyer. Going to have to go to get by the long guard here. And the tight one gets the nice line on the red yellow, moves it back, jams the backstone, and when the dust clears, I think Schwaller might still be shot at the back of the forefoot, but uh, there's a good look at it. Now that shot stone is exposed, and the red's starting to pile up around the outside. Uh, Burner's got second, third, fourth, and fifth. It's never a comfortable feeling for the team without last rock. No, the yeah, winner team is doing an excellent job here. Building up points around the rings with Hammer in the first. Exciting to see some play in the first end. Some rocks in play and some uh, hits being made. Some clutch draws. For the Schwaller team, the uh, lead is Pablo Lachat. He's on the left sweeping. Second, Sven Michel. Janusz Schwaller throws the third stones and calls the game. Benoit Schwartz is the fourth thrower. Makes the hit, comes across, moves the second stone. The one at the back that he made contact with does just leave the ring, so that gets rid of a, a couple of reds. Yeah, that was an excellently thrown shot by Benoit, and it was his precise hitting that won him the game in the semifinal over uh, an American Corey Dropkin team. It was a game where uh, they had the advantage early, and Dropkin started to make uh, a lot of clutch hits in the seventh and eighth ends to uh, start to come back, but it was a double on a rock. He would only really see maybe a quarter of, if that, and stick around in the rings for the win. They scored two in the eighth to win that one 5-4. little bonus there for Benoit. Not only did he move a couple of red stones, but his shooter stayed for second shot and half covers the shot stone at the back of the forefoot as well. He got everything he could have out of that, that one rock. Yeah, it was an excellently lined up shot um, from the back end altogether, and that's where you start to wonder about uh, the Swiss, almost the Swiss idea of having the uh, skip not necessarily be the one who throws shot stones, but maybe the one who has the best eyes in the house. And that was certainly one there by Yannick Schwaller. Coming down with quiet weight, looking to move that stone on the top of the eight-foot area, but uh, jams it on one on the side. So it is Schwaller sitting shot rock at the back of the forefoot. Second shot, the Brenner stone full eight. But I think with the jam, yeah, Schwaller still sitting third. Definitely right there. Um, that gets rid of some of that uncomfortable feeling that the Schwaller team would have had earlier on. Uh, it does give them the option. They're still looking at the double. They can play the double on the Reds, but he could decide to just come around and try to steal a send, too. He's only facing at worst. He might give up, two. Looks like they're going to play the double. I thought he might come around. Yeah, you sort of wonder how comfortable they feel in the first end, especially with a quick turnaround. The uh, semifinals just ended a little over an hour ago if that, and uh, electing to play the double. Play it safe. They can sit three here if it's made, and uh, force Brunner in the first end. Makes the hit, kills the two redstones, rolls the shooter out of play as well. So it's Schwaller sitting two at the back. Michael Brunner with his final stone will look to Draw needs full forefoot.
I might be too greedy. I just thought that was a good opportunity to draw, especially when you were in a whole lot less trouble than you had been earlier in the end. It was never going to be worse than two. You make a good draw, there's a chance to steal there. I don't necessarily disagree with you, Sean. I thought, especially with the quick turnaround, they might be comfortable taking the draw. And especially with how fast the um, slide paths have been breaking down as we get later in this event, it's become really tough to draw late in these games as we hit into the playoffs. So you might think they want to make those uh, big draws when they can, but Michael Brenner will have the opportunity to make the draw instead. Doesn't need to bury it, just needs to get full forefoot. Brushers were just cleaning it. Now they pick it up a little bit more. Bring it right into the pin for their skipper. Put a single point on the board for Michael Brenner in the first end. They take the one nothing lead. Yannick Schwaller will take last rock into the second. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Nutrient Egg Solutions Western Showdown, the largest international curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you decided to join us to watch some of the top teams from around the world participate in this event. My name is Jesse Hamannick, and I'm the Vice President and Country Head of Nutrient Egg Solutions Canada. Like farming, curling brings our communities together and Nutrient Ag Solutions is committed to promoting the diversity of sport within the communities where we work and live. We're so grateful to the Western Showdown team for allowing us to partner with them to bring you this event. And I wanna wish you all the teams a safe and successful event. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Curling Showdown. We're so glad you've decided to join us to come see some of the world's best curlers participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director for RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan in support of curling in our community, we're also proud to support the 2023 Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Curling Showdown, as RBC is committed to working with our community to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the community in which we live. Thank you to everyone on the organizing committee for putting this great event together. And on behalf of RBC Dominion Securities, enjoy the tournament. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. It's the men's final here from the Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Showdown. A lot of rocks in play in the opening end in the, uh, as it uh, finished. Just a single point on the board, though. Michael Brunner with a nice draw on his final stone right to the pin. Calls for the second or for the first stone here, the second end into the rings. It's the stone you see at the top of the forefoot. Yannick Schwaller called for the corner guard. And just the way they swept that, I think they were calling for the tight guard there, but it slides into the 12 foot. They didn't sweep that like they were playing for it to be in the rings all the way. With only a one point lead, I, I'd be surprised if they called for it into the rings in the second end. We're a little over 200 viewers on youtube.com slash user slash curling zone right now. If you're watching us online, there is a live chat. You can say what you want. Let us know where you're watching from and who you're cheering for in this championship final game. And I should say right now, if you're the mother of any of the curlers out there, I apologize for mispronouncing their names. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sure it's happened. There's a lot of different languages spoken in Switzerland, and neither Sean or I speak most of them. I struggle with English some days. (laughs) 
the rollout with the last stone allows another chance for the Brunner team to play a guard. I think they want the guard a little tighter. This is struggling a little bit here in the second end with, with the weight. They've got the line for that center line, but uh, slid into the rings on the last one, and this one's probably a little higher than they would have liked. No doubt. The one other thing that, that changes a little bit, you talked about the, the quick turnaround, about how the ice breaks down towards the end of the game. The other thing that's a little bit different here, this will be the first time for either of these teams. There's only two games out there, the women's final and this final, and the women's is a couple of sheets over. So nobody beside them can change the temperature out there a little bit. It also can just change your surroundings. It's not as loud in there. You know, it feels a little bit different, especially from a from a Grand Slam event or from a World Curling or a World Curling Federation event. Sorry, um, where there may not be fans that are, you know, heard on the ice. Teams might be a little more uh, familiar with that playing in a lot of club settings. Megan Edwards is watching from Hamilton, Ontario. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be on the call for this final game for you. Romano Meyer looking to come tight by the corner guard, make a play on that shot stone. Going to just rub it on the way by. That's that dreaded rub coming by a guard and still leaving it partly behind cover. Yeah, you think of you always think about the audible there is to let it go, but he obviously had a chance at it the whole way and just just a touch, just a nick on that one. Nudged it over just a couple inches and leaves it. Guarding partially the shot rock on the uh, side of the eight foot there. Sven Michelle now being asked to draw open side, sit two. We'll slide just about a foot behind the T line. Brunner can make a pass at Shot Rock right now. You can see it. It's open. They moved the guard over a little bit. It would be a little bit easier to get at now. But he's thinking in terms of trying to get back to a blank situation or hopefully forcing Yannick Schwaller to blank. He's got to group these stones. So he's hitting the one that's wider in the house first, trying to roll back to the middle, trying to leave himself a chance for a double later on. Well, all he gets is the nose hit. Yannick Schwaller looking at hitting it, I'd, I'd be freezing to that. It's behind the T-line. Yeah, we've seen this a couple times with Schwaller this week, playing a little bit passive, especially early. Um, content to take a miss and take an easy shot right back. Well, yeah, that's, uh, you know, to my way of thinking, that's the whole reason you play to the open side, especially when you slide behind the T-line. Your mm -hmm. Part of your thinking is, we'll slide behind the T-line. They hit it on the nose. We freeze. Mm -hmm. It's pretty risk-free. But they play a little bit danger-free. It's uh, to their downfall sometimes, and in other times it uh, lets them get ahead a little bit early. You saw that in the semifinal this afternoon against Corey Dropkin, but it was also a bit of their downfall in their game against Mike McEwen back in the B event when they had opportunities early on often and just couldn't capitalize for a score of more than two and it kept mike McEwen kicking around and a big score in the eighth gave mike McEwen the win in that game well in this case it gives uh anthony pito another chance to play the hit and roll towards center again trying to set up a double later on in the end had you frozen he wouldn't be able to do that Sweeping for every bit of curl they can get. Only manages to roll a couple of inches into the eight foot. K 
can't think about freezing now. This rock after the exchange of hits is a full rocks width in front of the T-line. It seems the Swaller team is quite confident in keeping uh, Michael Brunner away from that double. And they seem pretty uh, content with trying to take a soft deuce here. Well, they're going to get to the inside and roll over to the middle for him. Right to the edge of the button. The double's there now. And I think you stay buried if you make it. I think you're right about that, Sean. This is a big opportunity for Michael Brunner to get out of this end. Well, if he happens to stick it right in behind cover, behind cover not only get out of the end, but uh, turn around and put the pressure right back on the other side. That's absolutely right. The Schwaller team is curling out of Geneva, Switzerland. The Brunner team out of Bern. Michael Brunner going to be tight by the guard. Thick on the first one, comes across, catches the second one. Just a little thicker on the first than he would have liked. Spins up off the second one and into the open. He's just a hair thinner on that first one. He stays in behind cover. Yeah, extremely close for Michael Brunner on that one. Like you said, just a touch thick. But you like to get those... Uh... Hard and heavy ones under your belt early. It's nice to throw uh, a ton of different types of rocks. The opening two ends without a ton of uh, consequences behind you. Obviously, that was a shot he wanted to make pretty badly, but made it either way. Just not perfect. And you take that and learn from it as the game goes on here. For Ben Schwartz, the fourth thrower for the Schwaller team, a chance to hit and roll behind cover. And I think they indicated they're just going to play the short roll, try to get behind the center guard. He actually could curl past this enough to try to roll in behind the corner. Not able to get the curl he needed to roll behind cover at all. Stays right there. Another chance for Brunner to make a hit and roll underneath. And again, he was in trouble for a lot of this end. One good roll here, he puts the pressure on the other side. It's very true. A big opportunity here for Michael Brunner. And no matter what the end results in, whether it's a deuce or a single or a blank, it, you at least want your opponent to be throwing a uh, a difficult shot, one that he needs to look at a bit before he lets it go. And this is the opportunity here for Michael Brunner. Just cleaning early, but that started to curl. Wow. Ramona Meyer has been, uh, I've had a chance to do a couple of other games, and he's always aware of where the rocks are. As soon as that over rolled, he was ready on the brush to try to take it in behind the corner. Not able to get it there, but that's that little attention to detail that can make a difference every once in a while. Yeah, the awareness. You, you talk so much now in the world of curling of building a full team. You know, a skip who knows the game, a fourth rock thrower that can make the tough shots, second who can open things up but also draw, and sweepers that know what they're doing can not only put pressure on the brooms but are aware of where the rock is when they have it. With that rock staying in the port, there's room for Benoit Schwartz to come down, make the hit, rolls his shooter all the way out of play. We've got a blank end here in the second. Score still one nothing. Yannick Schwaller will continue to have last rock when we come back.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, pawn spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Ice tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. SASTAL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTAL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Still one nothing as we begin play here in the third end of play. Michael Brunner with the lead, Yannick Schwaller with the hammer. First stone called for a corner, or pardon me, for a center guard. It ends up a little bit off the center line. Schwaller calls for the corner guard. Now, Michael Brunner looking for a center guard here with this second of his lead stones. The result of all of that is that the front of the house is getting very cluttered already. No direct path into the forefoot. Yeah, we're looking at a wide path taken by Yannick Schwaller to get behind this corner guard now, especially. Probably the first time either team's been out that wide in the game. So a bit of a guess on the weight. Puts it right on the corner of the forefoot. That's a good guess. Yeah, I was going to say that was a pretty good guess by uh, Pablo Lashaw there. They always know uh, when you haven't played out there yet, you probably got to throw a little bit more weight, but you, you just never know how much. I guess if there's any benefit to the, uh, to the practice session, the lead probably throws the very first rock in practice as well. So he knows how hard he had to throw the first one down the path. It's true you put that one in the bank and he used it there for sure. Meyer looking to come around wide on the outturn side. Brings it into the eight foot, but it is still second shot. That was the fifth rock at the end. So Sven Michel being asked to play the run on the stone that's the middle of the three guards, run it over the top of the rocks in the rings, clips it, rolls the other shooter out of, or the ray stone out of the rings as well. Yeah, great shot there by Sven Michel. And that was something he was doing really well in the semifinal against Corey Dropkin. He was making just about all of those. He probably was the uh, highest shooting player on either team there. Yeah, a great game. Certainly opens up some room through the middle for Schwaller later on. A little bit more comfortable knowing he's got a pass to the forefoot.
Meyer with an attempt now to come tight by the corner guard, make a play on shot rock. And somebody dropped the stopwatch there and I was dangerously close to touching the rock. If it touches the rock, the rock is burnt. Yeah, really close there. Nice weight thrown there by the Brunner team. Very manageable. Didn't get it over maybe as far as they would have liked to, but. Sven Michel has an open hit at this one now. He'll want to get just across the face enough to roll back in behind his corners if he can. And early looks like uh, they're sweeping for curl. Boy, this looks close. Almost a little too close. Well, they actually over curled it, almost lost the shooter. Does hang on for a bite at the back 12. See this again, team's pretty playing pretty passive early. Michael Brunner content to hit this one. Got some guards up in play, but doesn't feel the need to push the uh, envelope at all yet. Yeah, that... In this case, I'd say that's a dangerous one to ignore. That's the kind of stone that ends up on the scoreboard if you ignore it when you don't have last rock. He may not mind rolling out on that either. If you, if you stay there, Yannick Schwaller comes around the corner guard, and then your rock is just something to jam on. Yeah, you're right about that. I think that question was Yannick asking the far end, do, do we want to come around wide? They did play this with uh, Pablo Lachat earlier in the end. I think this is still makeable, and I think it says a lot that uh, Yannick has that trust in his front end to go to them as well. You see often, especially in an event where there's no time clocks, this whole team is involved in a lot of the uh, shot calling down at the other end. And especially when Yannick comes down and steps in the hack, he's not hesitant to ask the front end's opinion on anything. By the front one. Brings it into the full eight foot and dead behind cover. Actually kind of between the two yellow guards. Room for Anthony Patau to uh, try to run this yellow back across the face of the one that was just delivered and kill both of them. If he can make that shot, he probably rolls his shooter back to the center line. Actually clips the high guard. Just peels it out. So shot stone still buried. Now we might see some interesting skip stones come down. So we're going to have a couple yellows in play in the rings most likely. As Michael Brenner prepares to throw his first. Schwaller electing to throw the uh, intern through the through the middle to get behind uh, the red guard. I thought he might come wide again. If, if his preference was to come wide around the outside on the last one. Certainly could do it again. And I, I understand psychologically it's you want to come wide because you don't ever want to leave half a rock open on the side where you can get the hit and roll. On this ice, that's not a concern. You can over very easy. Yeah, it might have been a bit of a call that uh, he was more comfortable making, knowing that Pablo had thrown that one early in the earlier in the end, okay. and uh, out wide on the outturn side, maybe hasn't been touched uh, at all, if not as much. I have to admit, I've I've seen a couple of the games. I haven't noted any uh, 
turn preference. Maybe he's just got a preference for his intern as well. Well, puts a dead in behind cover, and uh, those are about as even in the house as you're ever going to see two rocks get. Yeah, that was tremendous weight management, not only from Yannick, but the sweepers took it exactly where it needed to be. That was really nice. Runner looking at running the guard. Talked at it about... Uh, Either way, he can go straight back or he can go on the angle towards the one that's buried on the other side. It's not an either or shot. You got to pick one. There's quite the difference between the two. Probably the safer way to do it is to try to go across, run this guard across at the one that's buried on the other side. If you don't make it, you know that at least. One rock is open. If you try to run this straight back and you, you hit one of those, uh, we've all seen it, where you just miss the rock in the ring and don't roll off of it either. Yeah, exactly. There's a right way to miss this shot, that's for sure. And that wasn't it. Lucky to clip that yellow in the rings at least. Yeah. Yeah, because he really didn't roll the shooter at all. Schwaller sitting two. Question is, where do you put the third one? If you go back to the same spot, the problem with that is that uh, with that Yellowstone getting clipped out into the open, Brunner probably plays the hit on that stone and rolls back underneath. And if you draw there, you're in the way. Well, while we have a uh, pseudo timeout in the rings, I might as well give a quick update. The women's final is also on the ice here in Swift Current. And through two ends, it's a 2-1 lead for Unjun Kim of South Korea. She's leading Jolene Campbell, formerly of the province of Saskatchewan, now skipping out of Manitoba. And it's the Kim team with Hammer as they play the third currently. That game is also available on Curling Zone's YouTube channel. So electing to come behind their own corner guard again. And again, from the wide intern side. You never want to group your stones, but this goes back to, to what I was describing. If they put this back in the exact same spot that, that Schwaller threw his last one, Werner plays the hit and roll underneath it. It might be able to take your end away. You make this draw. Michael Brunner wants to hit the open stone. You let him because I don't think he can bury it well enough that you can't come after it. Well, Benoit Schwartz, a little less curl on that stone than the previous attempts. Comes right by everything and still stops in the back of the eight foot. Shot rock, I believe. Shot and second, both the two uh, around his own corner guard anyway. That's the true. open stone on the other side is third. Michael Brunner's best, perhaps, get out of jail card would be to come down and, and freeze to that, but... Uh, he can't feel real confident that he would know the line after watching Benoit's last shot come down. It, it didn't take the same path as the previous two draws. And Brunner's team hasn't thrown out there at all. That's true. And you really can't hit that one without either just sticking right there, there or most likely uh, flopping a little bit outside for third shot anyway. It's going to be a long roll for Michael Brunner that he's going to take on here, but there's... Ways to miss this, but still end up in a good spot. You can roll short and uh, 
end up under that long red, though it's not what he'd prefer. Yeah, you get under the red, though, with it being that long, and that's the difference. That's why they didn't come around this side. They figure if he makes the roll here, with as much curl as there is on this ice, Benoit Schwartz can get to the redstone and, and remove it. Makes the hit with the big weight, looking for the long, flat roll. Oh, did he roll too far? It's really close, Sean. I think they overswept the roll. I think they are third shot. You could see Yannick really wanted to get in there. He got a couple scrubs right at the end of that. Might have been the difference there. We might see the measuring stick come out when this ends over, but uh, for now, Benoit Schwartz is going to play the draw anyway. He doesn't have, well, I was going to say he doesn't have anything else. I guess he could play the yellow under the red if he really felt like he had to. I think this team should be confident. Oh, they're going to play that yellow back either way. No, I, I think they're just playing the intern. Draw. Okay. Just okay. The broom. Okay. You put that broom up there. I was like, <laughs> yeah. a little bit shook by it, but I think they should be, like I said, I should, I think they should be confident that they're one, two. Benoit Schwartz is the fourth stone thrower for the Schwaller team. He's just a little bit better than full eight foot to make sure he counts the shooter. Then we might see the measuring stick come around the outside to see who's counting in the other three. No issue there for Benoit. One for sure. Looks like two for sure. And they're going to measure the other two. Looks like it. They're at least going to take a deeper look at it. Looks like they've sent Anthony to go grab the stick, though. I have said this before this week, I know, several times in games that I've done. Every time you have to do a measurement on the televised game, the stick is at the other end. <laughs> you got a 50-50 chance, and it's always at the other end. It's the luck of the draw, and it's not in your favor to this week, Sean. Well, it just means we've got more time to bet a cup of coffee on who's shot rock. I, I don't think uh, we're going to get either of us to take the red, though. I, I I think it looks yellow. No, if I were a betting man, I think uh, I'd put the house on yellow, as you'd say. Well, I wouldn't do that until I had a chance to see just exactly how well centered the camera is over the, over the pinhole. But That's true. Can be deceiving on a, on a streamed game. Players doing their own measurements here at the event in Swift Current. The downside to that is that they don't always get out of the way as well as the officials do, and they don't always point at the rock either, but I think it was three. It went pretty fast by the Redstone. We'll find out when we get back. Certainly, uh, Schwaller's got the lead. Brunner will have last rock. I've been farming on my own right for... 40 years now, I think. It's a very uh, wholesome enterprise. You have very, very busy periods when you have to go hard. So many of our windows are so tight that uh, you, you just can't afford to miss a couple days of seating. When a producer places their trust in us, that when it's time for them to be able to make their living, we're going to be there. That's a tremendous responsibility that it's not a one day a year thing, right? In order to actually deliver on that, you have to build your processes and you have to build your team and you have to have a mindset of operational excellence because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And it's our job to make sure that they don't go wrong. Or if they do go wrong, that we can fix it before it affects our customers. So with the impact of my business and income, Will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. 
But I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterland. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual Letterland. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at letterlands.com. So after the measurement, it was three for Yannick Schwaller. He's got a two-point lead as we begin play here in the fourth end. And with a two-point lead, they bring the first one into the top of the forefoot, the corner guard thrown up. Then they bring a second one into the rings. Yeah, I think what you'll see here now is what we've seen almost all week from the uh, Schwaller team is them play very carefully when they're ahead we've seen multiple games they've played this week where they've jumped out to a lead in the uh first three or four ends and have played quite passively you know content with hitting a lot of uh opposition stones that are in the rings you know not feeling the need to uh take the hammer away until the later ends Like through the corner guard with his first one, comes around it with his second. It's still just the fifth stone of the end, so they can't kill the guard. They're going to elect to come down, try to sit on the corner of the stone that was just delivered. This is Sven Michel. Line looks close. They could have kept sweeping and brought that right down to the face, but uh, I think perhaps thinking they might leave a double on the yellows if they did that. They've got a good angle, yellow onto the red. So they'll be able to use it later on to remove the red if they have the chance. Michael Brunner knows that and would like to deal with it. Looked at trying to pass the yellow by without touching the red. Looks like a tough shot. So they're opting now perhaps maybe just to play the double on the yellows in the middle. Make the double sit right there. You'd sit shot and third. No double available back the other way. Makes oh, the wow. Passes it by the stone in the forefoot. It's about as close as you can get to that one. This is Sven Michel again, throwing seconds for this team out of Geneva. Going to look to make that yellow-red combination now. Not throwing a lot of weight at it. And right out of his hand, looks like the call was to sweep for curl. Needs to get to about half a rock on the yellow. Hits it a little thin, does make contact with the uh, redstone behind the corner.
currently live to over 350 viewers on YouTube. H. McKenzie is watching from Cranbrook, BC. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday late afternoon, Sunday evening. The short run there, it is the Redstone Shot Rock belonging to Brunner. The yellow sticking out past the corner is second. Third and fourth also belonging to Brunner. Schwaller looked to make a play on shot stone, roll to the open side. Has to keep these two yellow stones separated. Any chance for a double now might bring those other two reds back into a potential scoring situation. Makes the hit, passes it by the stone at the back, rolls across, does stay for second shot. So it's Schwaller sitting two. And no double available there. Actually, it's nice to say no double but there actually might be i don't know where you'll see it it's certainly not something you'd play if you needed it though you'd clip about a quarter of a rock on the red drive it into the one that they're hitting here and your shooter comes across and catches the other one uh, that's the kind of shot you play in uh desperation with your last shot if you needed two or three don't think you'd play it this early in an end they have a delicate shot coming down with the brunner team trying to just sneak by this guard and they do as soon as they're by the guard, they jump the sweep from the other side to try to get it to finish. They were hoping to pass it by that stone at the back, clips it out. That was an extremely tough shot. They came very close with it Probably. to uh, just get rid of it clean, but almost close to impossible there. Yeah, I'd say it was because they came as tight by that guard as they could, and they were right ready to make the switch on the sweep as soon as it passed the guard. I don't think they could have managed that stone any better still clip the back one fairly solid Brunner is sitting shot rock buried though Yannick Schwaller looking for the straight back double here this is in danger of over curling he's going to stuff it oh and there's a a bit of bad luck not only does he stop it but he rolls with it and so it's still buried behind your shooter yeah a chance for Brunner to sit uh, a couple under cover here and really put some pressure on as we're about to hit skip rocks here in the fourth Plenty of room coming by. They're sweeping for curl. Take it back to try to bury as much as they can. Probably stays about half out in the open, but it's deep enough now. If that rock's about oh, a foot higher, you run this yellow back to half and you might be able to make the double. It would be thinner now on the first uh, redstone to, to make the double and You'd have to flirt with maybe not hitting it all together. Not likely to take that risk. Dead stuff. This should be shot rock behind cover. Yeah, looking for the straight run back here is uh, Benoit. He 
got it cleaned the path like he was looking for the double and then uh that was a plan b call at the end i think they realized they weren't going to get the straight back he was hoping to hit it thin enough to at least clip the one into the back eight foot on the other side but he drives it between the two of them Yeah, that was a really tough outcome. Chance to draw and sit three, and all the discussion here is about how deep do we want to put this. There's a double available there now on the two reds, and they're going to concede that Benoit Schwartz can take a, a run at that double. So you might want to make sure that if he makes the double and sticks it right there, that the rock you're about to deliver would still be shot rock. You can absolutely do that, Sean, and still yeah. stay under cover of the red there. I think so. I think if you're right on the T line, you'd have a piece of the forefoot. And I think I'm looking at the overhead. If Schwaller has, to, or pardon me, it would be Benoit Schwartz. If he makes the double coming across to that back when he's, well, he might still have a sliver of forefoot. should be open if he does that though so you'll have a chance to come down to it and get your deuce By the front one now, it's just a question of where is it going to stop? Puts it just in front of the T-line. Just maybe a millimeter outside the forefoot there. Spot should be pretty close to keeping them shot if the double's made here by Benoit. long and hard at the left hand side but I'll be shocked if they don't play the double I would be as well and you know Michael Brunner fully expected them he was conceding them the attempt at the double not conceding the double by any means it's not an easy it's, it's a little when you're any anytime you're trying to hit a rock this thin it's not as comfortable as you'd like it to be this is a rock where you hit half a rock you probably roll over the top of that and right out the side Sweeping for a little bit of curl, makes the hit, does come across, catches the second one, but jams it on the outside, leaves it for a biter. Well, a pad break there. Michael Brunner will have the opportunity to go across, hit that uh, Yellowstone in the it's full 12 foot, and this would be for three. Yeah, a huge momentum shift coming now. Getting the three right back. Made contact, came across, caught the second stone, and I think I saw one of the brooms go up. Nice shot, and then it jammed. Yeah, I've definitely been known to uh, tell my skip a good shot before taking a look around the rings and noticing maybe that wasn't such a good shot. Final stone here, fourth end. Michael Brunner gave up three in the third. Chance to get them all right back. Just needs to hit and stay anywhere in the rings. Roll a couple of inches into the eight foot. Gave up the three in the third. Gets them right back here in the fourth. Restores the one point lead. It'll be Schwaller with last rock in the fifth.
I've got the bill. Oh, well, now, I've got the tip. Standard tip increased 2% this year. <laughs> That's why I keep you around. So, corn's looking great. Well, our crop plan is working. Mm, and we locked in that input financing at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. Sean Joyce, Josh Usick with you here from Swift Current. It's the men's final at the Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Showdown. Two teams exchanging field goals in the third and fourth. And it's two Swiss teams. If I talk to them about exchanging field goals, they won't have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe some people in the chat as well. Leaves us just separated by a single point as we begin play here in the fifth. Script we've seen quite a few times this week. The center center guard throwing up the corner, then the come around. Now the corner didn't get far enough off the center line either. It doesn't really have a path to come through there. They did play wide around that side two ends ago. Going to deal with the shot stone first. Yeah, it's also to do with the fact that that uh, center guard is quite high, but it does leave uh, Schwaller with the chance to come around it and try and make a play on it with the soft weight tap here. Moves that stone to the back of the eight foot. So now the yellow stone at the top of the eight, along into Schwaller is shot rock. And Romano Meyer will look to come tap it back. Might be looking to get it all the way through this time. Have to pass it by his own stone at the back of the eight foot. And they lost this one. It's on the guard. That is just the fifth stone of the end, but it's their own rock. You are allowed to remove your own, the same as the free guard zone. You're allowed to remove your own rock from the center line. It's just the opposition stones you can't move. Up to a little over 400 viewers watching us live on YouTube alongside Curling Zone. If you're watching us, don't forget to drop a message in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for. Al says he loves watching a Swiss men's final. Then you've come to the right place. Megan says she thinks Switzerland will win. And I'd say that's a pretty solid bet. She needs to find somebody to bet against on that. <laughs> Looking to tap their own back and roll in behind cover. Gets a piece underneath the guard. It just maybe an inch too soft there from Sven. Wanted to maybe roll a touch wider and maybe push that a little bit further away. Solid attempt. But they're both accessible still. Yeah. Could have simply played the draw around the corner guard, but wanted to play it that way to try to get the second stone away from the corner and limit the opportunities for uh, Brunner to roll undercover himself. Absolutely. Meyer with another chance to make the play on the partially covered stone. Just rubbed the guard the last time.
Got a nice line now. Looking for a little extra curl. They'd like to remove this stone and bounce in front of the shot stone. Pretty much like that. Yeah, it's a pretty solid uh, outcome for the Brunner team there. Well managed, really well weight thrown. That stone's a problem now for Schwaller. Yeah, you're sitting one year on the corner of the button, but that red stone's in a dangerous position. It's really hard for you to do anything with it. Yeah, with that red in front, that yellow might as well not be the shot rock because that's about the easiest run back anybody can have. Well, and it's, it's kind of queued up to uh, hit it right on the nose. You're going to spill it in behind the corner guard too. It's just it's dangerous in so many ways for the Schwaller team, but what can you do about it? You could play basically the same shot you just tried where you're trying to split in behind. Now you're going to expose shot rock when you do that. But having shot rock buried behind a, a redstone at the top of the eight foot's not helping you anyway. Could play it with some weight. Play the red back a little bit over the top of the yellow in the forefoot. Drive it back on the stone back eight. Try to roll behind cover. I have to admit, as they settle into the hacks, I'm not sure what they what they decided on. Well, it's a little bit of a... With the uh, outturn here, you'd assume they're trying to push this out the intern side and then roll to the outturn wing here. Unless they're trying to come across the face. I'll have to wait and see when this one comes down from Sven Michel throwing seconds for the Schwaller rink. Calling it almost like you'd see a club team call a shot and you don't tell anybody what you're playing and that way you've always made the shot. <laughs> it's the shot I was talking about. You come across the face, right onto yellow, onto the red at the back. A little bit unfortunate that he rolled too far. Not definitely close for who shot rock. I'd still bet on yellow though. Yeah, I would agree. Yellow shot at the back of the eight foot. They've got third side of the 12, but it did roll past the guards. Michael Brunner also seems to concede that it's yellow sitting the single. The problem for Brunner, you hit the stone at the back of the eight foot. Yannick Schwaller's not even going to wait for the rocks to stop moving before he calls for the come around. So you maybe have to get there first. Yeah, he's trying to beat him there for sure. That was interesting. I, I, Of course, we don't have mics on the players, and even if we did, we have to assume that these two teams are not speaking English, so I wouldn't <laughs> know what they were saying anyway. But haven't heard much talk about rocks. When uh, Anthony's got to come around, though, here, they switched stones. So it's possible that he's got one stone that they think curls a little more than the other, and now that they're playing a come around, that's the one he wants to play. Good job by the brushers. They had to get that in for shot rock. Wow. Gets it just deep enough. That was getting tight late. They just by maybe four or five inches got that into shot. Overburied on the uh, corner guard by three or four inches. So tough for. Yannick Schwaller to get to it with enough weight to move it. Yeah, and you've seen this through a lot of Schwaller's games. The uh, 
full team or just the three of them talking through uh, almost all of the back end shots as we get into the backstage of this game. No time clocks, obviously, in this event, so teams are free to uh, take advantage of that however they like. Traditionally, uh, with a lot of teams, you've seen teams that uh, will do that same thing. It'll be just when there is a team discussion, it's just three out of the four that discuss it. And uh, I know with some of the teams that I've worked with in the past, <laughs> part of the reason for that is that fourth person's job is to watch the clock. Not in this case, though. Nope, not here. But when you do have to play with a clock, somebody's got to keep an eye on it. Yeah, maybe that's normally Pablo Lashaw. And in these uh, no Might clock be. events, he's happy to take a swift break. I'm not going to name names, but there's perhaps one or two teams here that were playing this week that I don't think anybody's been assigned that job. <laughs> as soon as they get by, going to the offside sweep, trying to get as much curl as they can, makes contact with that stone, rubs it over enough that Shot Rock, once again, is the stone at the back of the eight foot. Michael Brunner's going to take a long look at it, though, before deciding. Still facing the same problem he faced the last time. You can hit shot rock at the back of the eight foot, but you know, even if you make it, Schwaller's going to come around the corner guards and get set up his deuce that way. So you almost have to get there first. You hate to ignore shot rock at the back like that, but the uh, situation that, uh, with the guards kind of dictates that you have to. Yeah, and they'll look to put this one. Maybe in a similar spot, they could yeah. come a touch deeper, but that just makes it easier to uh, touch. Maybe with that catcher there, they might be uh, feel a little bit safer, but this one looks like it's sliding a touch. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have bet they wanted it in the exact same spot, but this is going to slide deep. And now the chance for Yannick Schwaller to play that come around. Just biding the time, and he's got his opportunity here to get buried behind that corner guard, sit two, and he'll take that all day. He can now put this in a spot where it's unable to remove with that red sitting on the uh, edge of the eight foot there. This is where you'd like to be able to turn to your opposition and say, that draw you made, how, how much weight did you throw to get there? <laughs> Well, I'm sure all these teams have uh, stopwatches on them. <laughs> they have a good idea of uh, how fast that rock came down. Plenty of room by the front one. Starting the curl now. Brushers have gone to the offside if they need to brush it at all. So we'll come to rest. Corner the forefoot. Maybe a touch deeper than they wanted there, Sean. Yeah, I think maybe it. I mean, it's well over buried. If the second guard wasn't there, you could get at it. Deep enough that uh, Michael Brunner, if he gets to the corner about uh, half in front of it, he's probably close enough to the pin to be shot rock. Still, he's not playing with a lot of room here. You sure can't afford to bounce off it. You bounce off it at all, and with the amount of finish there is there, it would be Benoit Schwartz would be the next one throwing and would have enough room to come down, tap it through, sit three. Yeah, absolutely. You can't be short. If you're short, you're not shot rock. Yeah, not a ton of tolerance, like you're saying here. This is Michael Brunner, the skip out of Bern, Switzerland. Sweepers have backed away from this when he's got a lot of room. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you're getting close now, looking to sweep for some curl. You don't want to get caught here. Oh, it might have stopped just in time, just nestles up against that stone. So the one that was just delivered is not even dead in behind cover. Can Benoit Schwartz with enough weight to come past the nose on that stone? Push it back. And here comes Pablo Lashaw down to uh, join the conversation now. Looks like they're trying to follow it down anyway. That the. the uh, Last draw they threw down there by uh, Yannick Schwaller had a lot tighter by the guard. That one came by the guard with lots of room. If you throw back, what does he need? Probably back 12 foot weight and get across the face enough that it doesn't touch the yellow. And I can't, it's hard to tell whether or not it might already be touching the yellow. Got it by the front one now. Will it curl enough to get past the nose? No. Touches the uh, yellow at the side. Leaves it in the back of the button. It is exposed, though, and yellow sitting second and third, both buried. And here's the other problem for uh, Michael Brunner. You can't guard it because the red-yellow combination on the outside goes right into the shot stone. I believe it's close to yellow for fourth as well, Sean. I, well, I think it is. But if you just tried to guard shot stone, you could hit the outside of that red stone in the eight foot, drive it onto the yellow. It goes straight sideways into the shot stone. Well, they also have that double on the one sitting on the uh, left hand side in the eight foot from the aerial view here. True. There's a lot of ways to get to that shot stone. Not able to cover everything. Corner freeze the stone in the top of the eight foot still uh, still leaves a shot for three. That's what they're looking at, but that's that's not great either. Not a lot of great options here. Can you get to your own? And if you if you could, does it really help you? No, what it really shows the pickle that uh, this Brenner team was in before that uh, it wasn't even really a hundred percent made shot from Benoit Shorts, but it still forces the Brenner team into a really tough situation here. So looking to come into the top four foot as tight by that yellow one at the uh, that was just thrown as they can. I don't think there's any place he can put this in that line where he's not going to leave a chance for uh, Benoit Schwartz to, to make contact with both reds. Now, the double probably jams on the one at the back. And I guess you hope he loses the shooter and this is just for two. I don't even know how you roll the shooter out. It's going to come into the red at the side. If 
if you could get there, and I don't know if you can, if you get just across the face of your own and freeze to it, then if he tries to blast it, he's got to lose the shooter, and the second red comes back and jams on the yellow at the back, at the worst, it would be two. Boy, this has got a curl. Starting to catch it now, but it's slowing down just as it does. And he's going to leave it top four. Yeah, and there's, I think, room to make this for four. This could be a turning point shot here for the Schwaller team. And Benoit Schwartz. It's a good look at what Benoit will be able to see from the hacks. And there's looks to be daylight there. Needs to get just across the face. Actually, with big enough weight, you could actually hit it right on the nose, make the double that way. But probably feel safer if he gets just across the face. Yeah, no doubt. I think that's what uh, Schwaller meant. Uh, notion to as well with his broom there. Definitely a shot for three here. There is the possibility when you come across the face on the red, your shooter's going to come into the other yellow, and not that it's going to roll very far, but it, when it touches the yellow, it'll spin up a little. It doesn't have very far that it can go before you'd cut yourself to only three. Well, it depends how, Benoit, how hard Benoit throws this as well. You're trying to make the double and make it clear. I, he doesn't have to whip it by any means, but I would imagine he's going to throw a solid control, maybe almost normal. Then Michelle on the sweep, now followed by LaShaw. Looking for some curl. Makes the hit, catches the second one. Does touch the yellow, but stays right there. It's four points on the board. Brianna Schwaller, Brunner will take a quick look around the outside just to confirm that. Three for sure. Looks pretty certain. I think it's four. solidly I four. I think we're going to even see the stick this time. And we don't, no, we so after trading field goals, Yannick Schwaller picks up four here in the fifth end, jumps out to a three-point lead as we go into the sixth. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual letter lamps. Use discount code WO for 15% off. Only at letterlamps.com. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Swift Current is great because everybody that we do business with we know on some sort of personal level what i love about swift current is the vibrant arts and culture community i really like swift current we are not a big city but the size of the city is really good and we have everything swift current is a great sports town great teams and great fans people say you know good morning hi how are you even though we don't know each other Well, now, I've got the tip. Standard tip increased 2% this year. <laughs> That's why I keep you around. So, corn's looking great. Well, our crop plan is working. Mm, and we locked in that input financing at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. <whistles> this could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. 
Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. Well, just as we come back from the break, a quick view of the uh, thrower in the hack and that four points certainly stands out on the scoreboard. It exa hasn't exactly been a defensive game as it is. A couple of threes, a four. If you're Michael Brunner, you have to take some consolation in the fact you know you've, you're oppor you've had opportunities and you're going to hope you've got opportunities yet again. Yeah, exactly. He's had chances here. He did spot a three over in the third end, it was. and Or the fourth end, excuse me. And uh, he does have hammer in the sixth here, which is a positive always to have. So assuming we have a uh, two scores from the teams with hammer in the next two ends, he's going to have hammer coming home and a chance to uh, take it there. On the other side, and we saw this two ends ago from Schwaller with a two-point lead then, brought two rocks into the rings and then guarded in the center. This time a three-point lead, playing it the same. We're going to yeah. ask uh, Romano to clean things up in the middle a little bit. I don't think he necessarily needs to kill or wants to kill all the yellows. Just wants to move a couple and get the rocks off the center line. It's probably a pretty good result. He's got three rocks of his own in front of the rings. One of those uh, yellow stones that he jiggled around ended up behind the T-line. That was the fifth rock of the end, so Yannick Schwaller can start peeling guards now. Sven Michel in the hacks. If he hits this thin enough, he could get uh, two reds and maybe spin his shooter up over the top, but just comes across it. Taking a look back at the women's final, it was a steal of one for Jolene Campbell in the fifth, which ties that game up at three, heading into the sixth end. The uh, Korean team, Kim, still with Hammer as they play there. I have to admit here is we're already uh, two-thirds of the way through this men's final. I haven't even looked at the prize money here in this event to know whether the men's or the women's, uh, men's and women's are equal prize money. There was four teams in the women's side. I might be able to take a look at that shortly. Right about now, the men are going to suggest that the prize money should be awarded point per point <laughs> on the scoreboard. The men are playing for a $50,000 purse. Give me a second. I would check the women's. And the women is equal. Well, I would have expected the women's to be equal for sure. And sometimes when you've got more teams, it might even have been slightly higher. Although I think they were close. It was 18 and 25, if I remember the right numbers correctly. You're right with that, Sean. Yep. Yeah. playing in different formats the triple knockout for the men and the women were playing in five groups of five followed by a 10 team playoff the event organizers will probably all tell you that they did it that way just because with the numbers they had those were the draws that work out best i i sort of feel like they did it just to try to confuse me 
as I'm going back and forth from men's games to women's, and I, I made more than my share of errors this week calling it and talking about draw times. And... Yeah, it was definitely an interesting draw on the women's side. The 10-team playoff, something you don't see very often. That one started uh, last night with uh, 7 through 10 seeds playing in play-in games. The men was simply a triple knockout. Top eight made it, as you see, you know, everywhere around the country, honestly. Split plate on the uh, center guard there. Gets one of them into the rings. Most importantly, no obvious doubles available. Yannick Schwaller could make a, a play on the stone that and ended up biting the rings. The problem then is you've left two corner guards on the same side. Those probably worry him more than a little biter. This is Yannick Schwaller's first. Throws thirds and calls the game for the team out of Geneva. Makes the hit, comes across. Boy, just underneath, almost made the double. That was so flat. So now for Michael Brunner, having to address those uh, Yellowstones a little bit just to try to bring that biter back into play. Going to look to hit the stone at the back of the eight foot, roll behind the one at the front of the eight foot. Yeah, this is where he might hope that uh, the Schwaller team's going to take on that run back on their own yellow and possibly miss it, which might open the door for him. Makes the hit. The shooter comes across past the uh, stone in the eight foot. Well, big spin back, but it's still open. Yeah, and Yannick should be content to uh, get rid of that one. Anywhere particularly you're looking to roll on this, Sean? I was just looking at that myself. Uh, and I almost, yeah, you ha I have to say no. You almost need to nose it because if you roll at all, you certainly don't want to roll in behind the corner. You stay right there. Then if Michael Brenner decides to hit the top one and roll in behind the corner, he's not shot rock. The Shaw on this one hard, try and keep it away from that top yellow. Wow. Well, I don't think you wanted to roll there. I I am surprised Michael Brenner hasn't already called the freeze. <laughs> <laughs> You had some telekinetic powers on that, Sean, I think. Well, you know, it, it's just one of those stones when it's half covered like that. The freeze doesn't have to be quite as precise, you know. It, it, you get half around the stone up front, in front of the back one. Boy, if you ever weld it on, you know, like, like you said, you're, ne you're never going to play the straight back because you could easily kill both yellows and leave the red. Mm -hmm. It's got to get by the stone at the top of the eight foot, though. He's going to rub off it. Wow. Not able to get by. Does stop for shot rock. Oh boy, that was your chance to set up the deuce. Yeah, big opportunity missed by the Brenner rink there. Schwaller would no doubt look to hit this red as, again, but being a little more wary of where he rolls here, maybe. 
Well, he might like to take the yellow behind it. Yeah, you never mind that. That was, I was looking hit, as well. Get the hit and roll to the outside a little bit. Yes, his shooter will still be behind the T-line, but at least then the two rocks aren't kind of lined up where you could make the, the freeze and be behind cover. He only has to hit it just slightly off the nose to do that. They're also looking at the hit and roll all the way across. I don't think you gain anything with that. Just the skip stones left to come. Did they notion, Sean, exactly where they wanted to roll this? They talked about a number of things, and that's without mics on the players. You, know, you just don't always know what they've settled on. I, I guess when they're looking at coming across and rolling, part of the thought process there is if you only sit two, there is a double for Michael Brenner to get his deuce. If you sit three, he's got to play some kind of draw. Well, they pass it by the yellow at the back, eh? The way Sven was sweeping there, you looked like they were trying to get a touch inside roll. Looked like he gave it a couple brushes after it made contact, hoping it would flop inside just a touch, but it just nosed it. Brenner might have to play this as a hit now. You play the hit and roll undercover, and you, the reason you have to play it as a hit, because then if... Uh, Benoit Schwartz was to roll out. If you leave him some kind of a hit and he rolls out, you do have the straight back double for two. But you're not going to have a triple. So you might have to kill one yellow one now. It is possible he could hit this roll right to the back of the button. At least put a little pressure on Benoit Schwartz. Then what do you do if you're Schwartz? Do you have to hit the biter and just concede the chance for two because you don't want to give up a chance for three? Guess it'll depend on how well this stone is buried. Already sweeping for curl. Yeah, this just moved quite a bit. Makes the hit once again, passes it by the yellow at the back. Well, definitely now Ben Schwartz will want to sit three, and I don't think he wants to roll in behind his own. That could leave a triple. He's going to want to roll past it. And he can roll well past it. He can roll to the back corner of the 12. As long as he's full 12 foot, he's sitting three. That's true. This is a big end for Schwaller to get the force here. Take Hammer back in the seventh, and uh, you're in control of the back two ends here. Up two, there's not much more you can ask for in a top 20 matchup in the world here. Makes the hit. Rolls across, does sit three. And I don't think I see a triple there where you're holding the shooter. So no, not there. likely. Just looking to draw. Probably just rolled far enough. You, even a rocks with less probably there big shot for Michael Brenner tra trailing by three as we play here in the sixth his final stone facing three Schwaller counters needs a solid bite of the forefoot here 
Yeah, not a gimme, not only because he's facing three, but as we spoke earlier, as this game goes on, it's going to be tougher to draw. That slide path's going to break down quite fast. Not quite yet, though. Rushers were cleaning it. Comes to the back four foot, but does stop in time. So Michael Brenner picking up a single point here in the six. Closes to within two. Two ends left to play. It'll be Schwaller with last rock in the seventh. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, pawn spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. SASTAL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTAL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Sean Joyce, Josh Usick with you here from Swift Current for the men's final. And as we come back from the break, we see the long guard, the long center guard was thrown on the first one. I think, Josh, it's it's hard steel two center guard time here. Yeah, no doubt. Um, down to Schwaller will be looking to clean up everything he can, no doubt. He can take hammer into that final end with a lead of two, he'll take that every day of the week. And uh, and I'm going to assume that they tried the tick on the first one because I don't think that rock is touching the center line. But they must have missed it as they – yellow was sitting in the back corner. For sure. Just under 500 people watching us on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in for this men's final at the Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Showdown. The Meech 11 chimed in saying the men's purse was lowered saying it was 46,000 on the men's side. you got to assume the Meech is uh, Sean Meech. I'm watching Sean this Meech. game. The third for the uh, Steve Laycock team at a quarterfinal finish, dropping out to Corey Dropkin well, and, last and, night. Uh, Sean Meech and Chris Heikert both off that team live in Swift Current. Chris Heikert's the manager at the Curling Club, I would imagine. Meech probably involved in this event as well. They might have more uh, knowledge on the purse than anybody playing in the event, yeah. So the two center guards, the one come around. Now the Brunner team coming to the face of the yellow stone, and that's five stones, and Yannick Schwaller almost tripping over rocks trying to run up there to, to peel guards.
Taking a second look now. That's Let's Sven Michelle sits in the hat. This might be the call coming from the other end is that uh, maybe we feel the tighter guard. That long one by itself doesn't do a lot. Off center, especially, yeah. Yeah. And I can see uh, half to two thirds of the center line getting it out of the way. You actually can see the rocks in the house. Yannick thinking double peel, though, and he's the skip, so he wins. Yeah, that's how most of those conversations go most of the time. Sven Michel not close to the double here. He's going to get the top one and roll out. Meyer will look to replace the long guard. Yeah, and now you talk about that opportunity to appeal the tight one now with the uh, long one gone. Meyer has the opportunity to make this long one a lot better now. Yeah. Stick it on the center line. Stay high up there. Romano Meyer. Throwing second stones for the team out of burn. Well, a little bit of angle left on those stones, but certainly closer to lined up. Still a uh, an opportunity to make the double over the top. And once again, he's just going to get the top one. Benoit Shorts will settle behind the house as Yannick Schwaller's rocks will come up next for the team out of Geneva. To an extent, you can, you can start to question the timing now. It's uh, at some point in time, Michael Brunner's going to have to make a play into the rings. No doubt. And I no. don't think he can wait for his last rock because... Uh, if you're playing, even if you're playing it as a tap back or a run, you're not going to have any better than just a piece of the forefoot. And I don't think that's likely enough to try to steal. No, you saw this uh, back end from the Schwaller team was drying extremely well, even late into the game in the semifinal they played against Corey Dropkin. So expect them to have some confidence with those as we enter the seventh and eighth thems. They know Yannick Schwaller is going to continue to peel guards. Not even attempting the double peel there. It's straight peel. A lot of separation between those two when they were dead lined up. Mm -hmm. Already discussing it in the house. Is it time to uh, look at making the play in the house? Depends what, what you decide you have to play in the rings. I'll be honest, it would be tempting just because you're two down and, and you need to make a really good shot. Nose hit the guard. Try to hit red onto red onto yellow. Yeah, that's obviously a little scary. It's scary. Can't afford to roll off. Obvious, yeah. But it's it's hard to make anything around there with weight. You go to play any kind of a tap red right onto yellow, your shooter rolls out, you leave a double. And you don't have to play it on this shot yet. I mean, certainly can discuss it, but uh, I think you throw one more guard. Yeah, it's almost a scenario where that tight one is too good of a guard. We talked about the uh, high one being a little bit off-center a couple times. But this is tight, and it's 
perfectly covering that you can't really get in there with anything too hard. This is Anthony Patu. You could freeze another one in there, let them peel the guard, but then again, when you're playing the double tap up, you're still only going to be just biting the forefoot. I think when you make your play in the rings, you got to look to move the yellow. I believe this is still just the guard. Looks to be that, Sean. Curling it now, they'll touch the center line. I'm struggling to keep track of where we are in the end. I think our rock counter is one behind. I think you're right on that, yeah. So this is uh, Schwaller's final stone. We just skip stones left to come after this. And still content just to take off the top one. Yeah, it, well, he, he, there's no reason for him to force the issue. It's, it's up to your opposition. Let them blink first, and then you can react to it. So they did decide just going to play the freeze onto their own. Expect Schwartz will peel the guard. And then I guess you play the tap, tap, tap and uh, make him look at three with his last one. Yeah, it seems to be the play here from the Brunner team. Going to need a miss is uh, what you're banking on, obviously, here, but. Just half in the four is what Ben Washworth is going to need, most likely. Maybe a touch more than that. Once they know they're by, you see them switch for a little extra curl. Any tap they could get on the yellow now would help them later on. Shooter did bounce out in the open enough that uh, Benoit could make a play on it. If you're hitting it, I, I don't know that you necessarily want to roll under. Yeah, that was the initial uh, suggestion from Yannick Schwaller was to roll under. But we'll see where the uh, call ends up here. Just the way those uh, rocks spread around off the, the tap, they can see a piece of the red stone on the outturn side. So you might be able to play yellow onto red, or pardon me, red onto yellow with enough weight to move it back, sit dead buried top of the forefoot. Yeah, you do have a piece of that. Yeah, and if and if you're doing that, I, that's why I don't think uh, Schwartz wants to roll behind here. If you leave your shooter out in the open, You'll have it to slash in. Well, this is Sven Michelle on the curl now. Looks like they're only going to nose it. Maybe even a touch flop outside. Not much, though. I think that's a pretty good spot. It leaves the double, but if Michael Brenner's making the double, then uh, that stone is only half in the forefoot now is the best one he's going to have trying to steal. Looking at the shot we talked about as well, playing the, uh, the red onto the yellow. Very quiet, he'd be looking at playing it. He wants to keep the shooter around the side of the forefoot as well.
the red onto the yellow and roll to the side of the eight foot is is probably your best result. It'll get you the the closest to the four or closest to the button that you can get. You'll have almost full four buried. And actually, if you roll your shooter into the full eight foot at the side, maybe somewhere around the T line buried with a two point lead as they play here in the seventh, does Benoit Schwartz not hit that rock and then have to roll into the button? I don't know if he draws against two with a rock wide open in the edge of the eight foot. Yeah, that's at least get Benoit Schwartz thinking for sure. Yeah, I mean, to make this double, first of all, hard to hold the shooter if you make the double. If you do, it's only full 12 foot. He's not hitting it out there. Mm -hmm. But it's the double either way. Nothing out of the brush. Still a little thin on the first one. Wow. Catches it up the second one to uh, spill it out of the rings. Loses the shooter as well. Well, this is as comfortable as Benoit Schwartz could be. He's only facing one. He's almost full four foot. They have thrown this in turn draw a number of times in this game. I've actually thrown a little wider a couple of times too. Comfortable on this side. Worst case scenario, they're one up with coming home. Yeah, no doubt. Not any not much pressure on Benoit as he throws this one. That's why I would have liked to see them play the other shot. If you sit two, it, it, like you said, you you force them to think a bit. Maybe at the very least put two shots into his mind. Settled into the hack. Close to see the sweepers can get it there. Knowing he just had to put it in the forefoot, no mistake. Benoit Schwartz, nice draw with his final stone. Schwaller picks up one and retakes the three-point lead. It'll be Brunner with last rock coming home. been farming on my own right for 40 years now I think it's a very uh, wholesome enterprise you have very very busy periods when you have to go hard so many of our windows are so tight that uh, you, you just can't afford to miss a couple days of seating when a producer places their trust in us that when it's time for them to be able to make their living we're going to be there. That's a tremendous responsibility that is not a one day a year thing, right? In order to actually deliver on that, you have to build your processes and you have to build your team and you have to have a, a mindset of operational excellence because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And it's our job to make sure that they don't go wrong. Or if they do go wrong, that we can fix it before it affects our customers. So what the impact of my business and income? Will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at
at letterlamps.com. <laughs>end underway here and uh see something it's the first time i've seen that this week uh i was doing a game and i can't remember could have been you josh uh, earlier this week somebody was mentioning it's one of the uh, situations that because of the new rule the no tick zone when you get a team that really desperately needs to uh to count some extra points in an end they'll throw their even though they've got last rock they throw the center guard because you have seen teams playing that uh Corner rock tick, push it into the rings that came from mixed doubles by putting the guard on the center line. You can't do that. A little panic there for Pablo Lashad. You saw him. Looked like he felt like he had something under the rock there coming out. Had to shake it loose. Boy, that's a good recovery. Yeah, definitely Gets an it. interesting play from uh, Brenner putting the uh, guard up on the center there. Well, you, you do it so that they can't push it into the rings. and I, I've, I've heard about it. I haven't seen it done yet. Until just now. I've seen a couple firsts this week. I saw Steve Laycock and I believe it was Nicholas Adeen have a little discussion over uh, whether a rock was touching the center line. And it could be uh, ticked over. No real measurement for that. Like we do have a... Uh, have the uh, biter stick of course I don't know if there's a universal one but I think there are, there are a couple of uh, measurement tools out there I do remember last year here in Saskatchewan at, at seniors they came up with something and part of it was because and they saw it in advance it wasn't something where a problem came up and uh, then they had to react to it sure it's very similar to what you see here there's a logo through the ice so they had to come up with something that would extend the center line upwards still just the fifth stone of the end so the uh Schwaller team wanting to have a quick chat about how do we approach this. You wouldn't play the push the corner guard into the rings now because the reason you do that on the first stone is so you can hit it on the next one. Well, you can hit it on the next one now anyway. Yeah. You know, once upon a time, three up coming home like this, you just throw the rock through, and uh, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do that here. He's actually left. The two guards are in a position where you're going to have a chance for the double peel on the next attempt. Yep. So why put another rock where you could jam something? Lengthy discussion. Women's final sits at 4-3 in the favor of... Jolene Campbell, they're playing the seventh here currently. We're on track for this men's final to finish just before the women's, barring an extra end here. So you can feel free to switch over to the women's once we're done here. And they do end up firing it through. Took them a long time to get to that, but uh, firing it through. So now uh, the Brunner team look to come between the two reds, sit on the face of the stone at the back four foot. He's still got rocks to work with. Three is not out of the question here. Yeah, exactly.
Got to get by the center guard, though, and not going to. A little bit light as well. Yeah, now expect to see some uh, rocks in front of the house leaving. The easiest double is the two that are close together. Have to be a little careful not to jam it on something in the rings. The weight they're going to throw here, they'd have to be a little unfortunate to jam it solid enough that it stays. Benoit coming down to take a look. There are doubles both ways. They could uh, play the lone guard on the side, come across, hit the back end of the other red, kick one out the side and have the shooter carry through. These two stones closer together, it's a little easier to get the two reds, and he only has to be a little off hitting them at the same time, and it should spin all the way up and out. It's close there. It gets both of them and rolls the shooter out. Perfect from Sven Michel. It was a deuce for NG Kim of South Korea in the seventh. She takes a 5-4 lead into the eighth in the women's final. Jolene Campbell will have the hammer, and a deuce wins her that $16,000 prize. I don't understand this call at all. Scoreboard says you're not hidden. Yeah, this is a bit unconventional for sure. Took a bit of a double take at that, <laughs> to be honest with you. Going to kill the yellow and then roll all the way to the back 12. Now I think you'll see them play the slash on the corner on the guard towards that one if you kill them both. You know, the game's close to over anyway, but uh, there'll be no guards left to work with once they peel this guard anyway, if you happen to clip the one on the way by. Yeah, no doubt. I guess if it was as close as our scoreboard says, it was, uh, we've got seven to five on our scoreboard. It's actually eight to five coming home. I did neglect to mention that. I, I did notice it. I figured it would have been fixed promptly. There it is. Oh, no, not quite. <laughs> Just needed to change the one. <laughs> there we go. And he'll catch the one in the back 12 as well. Wow. So just the one rock left in play, the stone top eight belonging to Schwaller and with four stones left to come, Bruner needs to find a way to count three of them. You're going to come around the yellow to the back 12. Yeah, a bit of a Hail Mary now for uh, Michael Bruner. I think this game is just about all but wrapped up, barring some incredible misses from the Schwaller You're side. Going to need two picks and a power outage. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be at about half, three quarters. Well, actually pretty solidly yeah, buried. A little spin at the end. That's a nice shot. I mean, it's all you could do. Yonick Schweller now to run this yellow straight back. Won't mind if he just picks it clean either. Obviously. He's going to miss it altogether, though. And now nothing left to hide behind. No, that's what I meant. He wouldn't mind picking the yellow clean. Oh, okay. Okay. That's true. As long as you're not missing open hits here, it's still. Yeah, you've well got on two stones to left. Uh, Brunner's got three stones left. He needs to find a way to count. Three of the four stones that he's got left in play, the one that's already in, and two, three left to come. Two uh, open hits. We'll run them out of rocks. 
Anthony Patu looking for the guard here. Not sure if he where exactly how deep he uh, wanted this one. Looks like he'll can be content sitting above the rings by a foot or two. That'll be the last guard they can throw. They have to come in after that. Kind of hoping against hope that uh, Benoit Schwartz would have one of those rocks where you hit just off the nose, drive it by the stone in the rings and leave it covered. No such luck. Not today. So Michael Brenner's first. Might be his last. Barring a miss from Benoit Schwartz. I am prepared to bet they will be brushes down on Benoit Schwartz's stone as soon as he lets go. No doubt. You don't want to leave anything up to chance, and they're yeah. cleaning that path pretty uh, fervently. The only thing that probably hurts you is a pick. And he won't be quiet on this stone. And you don't often see big weight pick very hard either. It's Ben Michelle with the brush down. Benoit Schwartz with the hit. And that runs Michael Bruner out of rocks. Yannick Schwaller and his team of Benoit Schwartz, Ben Michel, Pablo Lachat, the winners of this year's men's division, the Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Showdown. I'm Sean Joyce, happy to have been joined here this afternoon by Josh Yuzik and by all the uh, announcers we've had all week long. It's been exciting curling since Wednesday night. That concludes the men's division. The women's game still underway. And uh, for those of you who want to tune in over there, you can watch the end of the women's game and the check presentations for both divisions will be on that stream right after that game is finished. So good afternoon, good night from the men's division, and uh, thanks for joining us for this entire event here on the Sastel Curling Stadium. feed the world with nutrient and a large portion of what our job is is to get fertilizer out with the carriers so they can get directed to the farms or to the different retail locations. We know that if we don't have the answer to something we're not afraid to reach out because we have support from everyone. We've got a really good team behind us. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. 
make your curling club the next curling stadium.